Welcome to Rock Intercessors Ministries, connecting with you and your family today in prayers to rescue and revive. We're an apostolic, prophetic, deliverance and healing ministry. God has called us to pray and destroy the work of the devil in your life and in your family, to bring healing to your spirit, soul and body. Come and join our service each Sunday at Walthamstow Primary Academy, London, E17, 5DP, from 11am to 1pm. Be blessed as you join us in prayer, in the name of Jesus. Amen. to minister to us in a very wonderful way. Amen? Because I know that it is the Spirit that quickeneth us. The Bible says that the flesh profited nothing, but the Spirit quickeneth. It is the Spirit of God that brings understanding of the Word of God to us. When we receive the word of God, it's not by power, it's not by mind, but it is by the Spirit of God that we will understand and that the word of God will richly dwell in us. Sammy said, The word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against thee. But a word is quicker than two edged sword. So we're going to enrich ourselves today with the Word of God, and I pray that the Holy Spirit will speak to us and bring understanding of the Word to us in Jesus' name. Remember, we are still in our 40 days fasting. Are we doing it? One thing I want you to understand that is that this time around we are in our 40 days fasting is also a time of temptation. It's also a time, a very, very hard time. You know why? Because the devil do not want you to fast. It will bring discouragement from different angles. You say, I'm fasting, but what's happening? Yes, because you are doing the right thing. And the devil do not want you to do the right thing. Amen? So whenever you are fasting, do not think, oh, because I'm fasting, there will be no attack, there will be no problem anymore, I will just relax. No. When you are fasting, devil know you are breaking through. So devil wants to stop you from going further. So what the Bible says, when you persist, the Bible says resist the devil and the devil will flee from you. Amen? He says resist the devil, resist the power of darkness and the devil will flee. When you are fasting and praying, it is a good time to resist the devil. Because the devil will try to come and stop you. Sometimes physically and sometimes through different ways. To discourage you. To bring quarrel, even in the family. You can see when you are fasting, there are problems. Husband and wife, children. Problem comes from different angles. Then you say, Am I not fasting? What's the need of the fasting? Devil wants you to stop it. So never stop your fasting. Amen? Never stop your fasting. Okay, remember this month we are having a beautiful team. Believe, fast, pray. Believe, fast, and pray. And today I want to speak on. Believing God right. Believing God in a right way. Knowing God, understanding God. You know, the Bible says, My people are perish for lack of wisdom, for lack of knowledge of whom God is. When you lack knowledge, when you lack wisdom of who God is, the Bible says, My people perish for lack of that wisdom. For lack of knowledge of the way God works. That is the way that God works. 
But one gentleman in the scripture called Daniel understand God. He understand God. In Daniel, uh, uh, in Daniel chapter 3 from verse 16 to 20. Daniel chapter 3, 16 to 20. He wrote about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The way they resisted the king. The way they resisted the call for them to stop to worship God. So the king told them to bow down to his God, to man made God. But they resist. They said, No, we are not bowing down to this year God, O king. And they said, When King Nebuchadnezzar told them, Look, choose life or death. If you want to live, bow down to the gods. If you want to die, carry on with your God. And they said, we have no option, king. We have no option. We're going to serve our God. And if we are in Daniel chapter 3, from verse 16, and the word of God said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said unto the king, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee. In this matter, it is if it's so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fairy furnace, and He will deliver us out of thy hand, O King. Verse 18. But if not, be it known to you, O King, that we will not serve your God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. This is the way to believe God. You believe God strongly that someone will come and say to you, plead guilty and you are free. Stop serving God. Or don't plead guilty and get into trouble. And then you decide because God told you not to plead guilty. And you say, I am not pleading guilty. Whatever comes, let it come. Obedience. Believe God. So then, uh, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he says to the king Nebuchadnezzar, he says, look king, you want us to serve your God and live our own God. We will not do it. We're not, we do not even want to be anywhere careful to answer you back. We are throwing it back to you that we will not serve your God. Even if our God, whom we serve, is not able to deliver us. We will not serve our God. But we know that He will deliver us. Amen? That's a strong belief. A wonderful strong belief. That God wants us to, to have when we are believing God. And when we are serving our God. We don't serve God thinking that everything will be as roses. We don't serve God thinking that there will be no problem. We don't serve God thinking that, oh, there will be no challenges in our way. There will always be challenges in our way when we are serving God. Always there will be challenge. And when challenge come, we must stand firm and say to our God, I believe in you. And I know you are able to deliver me. Amen? And then, we got a very good example of Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 22, 39 to 47. Luke chapter 22, 39 to 47. You know, when Jesus Christ was about to be handed over to the evil people, and he looked, he went in, and then he prayed. Luke chapter 22, 39 to 47. This is Jesus, the Son of God. And then he said, and he came out and went as he, uh, as he, was, as he would he always do, to the Mount of Ely. And his disciples also followed him. 
Amen. Luke 22, 39 to 47. And he came out. And he came out and went, as he was what? To the Mount of Olives. And his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that you enter not into temptation. 41. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone, about a stone cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. He said, Nevertheless, not my will, but your will. Imagine the Savior. When he was about to be crucified, he felt the, the pain, the weight, the sorrow. And then he knew that what he's going to go through will be full of pain and pain and pain and humiliation. He cried to God. He cried to his father. The word of God said, as we read down, you will see the Bible said that the sweat that was dropping changed from water to blood. Such a, such a prayer, such a desperation prayer to God. He cried to God, remove this cup. Remove this cup. I don't want to go through this. But not my will, but your will. What did God do? The word of God told us that God sent his angel. And the angel of the Lord strengthened Jesus. And God said, my son, you are going this way. You are drinking this cup. You are dying for the sins of the people. That is why you are here. I am not sparing you on that. You are going through this cross. He is God. His name is Jesus, the Son of God, God himself. But his father, the father did not spare him. The father said, look, you're going to go through this cross. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, it says, that God that did not withhold his son from being crucified, but let him go through it. Shall he not through him give us all things? Jesus Christ cried and prayed, filled or full of sorrow, and said, God, I want this pain to pass me. But not my will, but thy will, O oh God. When you are believing God, do not believe that everything is going to be roses along the way. That's a big mistake. The Bible said that a gold must go through fire. Before you become a gold, before you bring out a gold, it must go through fire. And then you can see that all the disciples go through fire. You can see that Jesus Christ himself go through fire. Will you not go through fire? Amen. You're going to go through fire. So you're going to be ready. You're going to be strengthened. Just pray to God when you're going through temptation, when you're going through persecution, when you're going through fire. Pray God, give me your strength. Let your strength be my strength. Believe. Do not go back. Stand firm in your belief. So Jesus Christ went back and found the disciples sleeping again. He said to them, wake up. Wake up. Do not continue to sleep. Pray so that you will not enter into temptation. I think Peter slept the most. And that is why he denied Christ for three times. Amen. 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 He was the head of the apostle and he was sleeping. And that's why I tell you, I don't, I don't want to give myself. Although it's not, it's not good for the body, but I don't sleep comfortably. Believe you me, for more than 30 years. That's true. That is true. Because I want to avoid going to deep sleep that. You know, devil will come and knocking on your on your head. You are the <laughs> devil will be kicking you. You will wake up and every every place is sore. No, 
We got to be awake. We got to be sober. The Bible said, "Be sober, be awake, be ready at all time. Do not continue to sleep." The Bible says, "Be sober, for you do not know what is there ahead of you." We read Second Corinthians chapter four, eight and nine. Second Corinthians chapter four, from verse eight and nine, and it says. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not despaired. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. This is the disciples of Christ. They were cast down, but they are strengthened. They are not destroyed. It's not easy. The word of God says, through many temptations and persecution, we will enter into the kingdom of God. If you see the kingdom of God and Christianity and righteousness and serving God as roses, as very easy, look again. You are missing something. Amen? Amen. You are missing something. Look at Job, the man that feared God. The righteous man, he said, when his wife said to him, what are you still doing? You still trusting God? Look at all your body so You've lost everything? Cause God and die! And Job said, ho, ho, ho. you have spoken to like one of those foolish women. Amen? He said, you've spoken like one of those foolish women. Shall I expect only good from God and not evil? I can assure you, there is no child of God, really child of God, that will not go through persecution, that will not go through difficulties, that will not go through challenges. When you are going through challenges, when you are going through difficulties, believe it, that yes, I am on the right track. Praise God. Believe it that I am on the right track. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. That was a time when I was praying. This is 1997. I will never, I will never forget it. 1997. So I just come back and I want to pray. And I get on my knees and I start to pray. Immediately before I open up my mouth to call onto the name of God, I saw this demon pulling my leg, trying to distract me from praying. This is physical, it's not happening spiritually. And I look back, I kick it. <laughs> <laughs> and this is real. It was pulling my leg. You don't want him to pray, you want to distract me. No. I continue, I know I'm doing the right thing. I know I'm destroying the power of darkness. That's why I know the year 1997. You never get off me. Amen. Whenever you want to pray, that's why the devil will come and challenge you. That's why they will come and bring something, distraction. We distract, we remind you, this sin, that sin, what you've done, what you've not done. Let those things get behind you. God is not judging you when you are on your knees. God is not condemning you when you are on your knees. Amen. If God can listen to devil, when devil go to God and say to God, don't you see Job? You are the one that protecting him. Remove the protection. Then he will deny you. God listened to devil. And God said, okay, Job, go. Remove his protection. He is my servant. He is a righteous man. God listened even to devil. What about you? Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. God listened to devil. God said to him, okay. Remove the protection. He, will, he is my servant. And then they will go and afflict Job with pain and sore. But Job did not fail God. He will stand. And the Bible says in Job chapter 13 from verse 15, Job said, Though he slay me, though he kill me, yet will I trust him. But I will maintain my own way before him. This is Job, the righteous man. No one like him. 
But he's going through this affliction. Saws all over. He loses everything he has. But he stands and he stands firm and says, Though he slay me, though he kill me, I will still stand. I will still believe him. So when you are believing God, when we are talking of believe, 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 believe and be strong. When things are hard, when things are going well, when things are difficult, when, when you are sick, believe God. That our God is the mighty healer. Amen. He will come through for you in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. 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 I just give testimony about my neck. It is true. It was so painful. Sometimes I cannot even drive with it. I use one hand, do whatever I'm doing. But I believe that I'm healed. In all this time, it goes for like nearly a month. I believe that I'm healed. Until when my wife came back, and I said to her, Mommy, <clears throat> something there's a job to do. Pray for me. And then she prayed for me. And I was healed completely. Amen? Amen. So even when there is pain, like my sister going with this, um, uh, uh, whatever, crushes, yes, you are healed in Jesus' name. Amen. I, I, I thank God for your life. You didn't let you keep you at home. You come to the presence of God. Because our Apostle Peter said, To whom shall we go? For you have the word of eternal life. Who shall you go? When, if you are sick and you didn't come to prayer, now, to whom shall you go? When you have problems and you didn't come to God, to whom shall you go? When you are facing difficulties and you didn't come to God, to whom shall you go? Who are you going to run to? Where are you going to get it easy? You can't get it easy anywhere. You go to depend and rely on to God for salvation, for healing, for deliverance. And that's why Job said, even though he killed me, I will serve him. I believe in him. I will trust him. Even though he slay me, I will trust him. Believe is trusting God. Amen. Amen. And Job said, 19 Job 19 to 25 to 28 says, For I know, I really know that my Redeemer liveth. I know that my Redeemer liveth. He says, no matter whatever I'm going through, I've lost everything. Lose my family, lose my health, lose my skin. But I really know, I believe, I stand strong, I am not shakable, I stand firm. I know that my Redeemer did it, and I believe it's going to come through for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That would be our culture. We know that our Redeemer did it. No matter what, no matter the situation, no matter the circumstances, we know that He lived it. We know that he's going to come through for us. We know that he is a great God. I'm going to conclude with Jonah. What about Jonah? In Jonah chapter 2 from verse 1. When Jonah offended God. Jonah offended God and he was running away from God. He didn't want to go to Nineveh and preach the good news. He was running away from God. And then he was cast into the, into the sea. And he was swallowed by a big fish. Jonah was inside the fish belly. At the end of the at the end of the death, he still believed God. Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. Jonah still believed God. And then he said to God, if you can hear my prayer, Hallelujah. I believe you will hear my prayer. Amen. Bring me out to the dry ground. I will do your will. Amen. When you are in trouble, what do you do? You keep on sorrowing. No. Amen. That is the time to trust God more. Amen. Praise God. When there is problem, when there is temptation, when there is difficulties, it is the time to know that your Redeemer live it. It is the time to cry unto God and say, God, if you listen, Jonah sinned against God, disobedient, he was running away from God. So he wasn't doing, he wasn't righteous like Job. Jonah was not righteous like Job. He was running away from God. But he still found himself together in the fish belly. He lifted up his eyes to heaven. And then he said, I know he's not seeing heaven anywhere because he's in the fish belly, in the closet. 
but he gazed heaven in the spirit. And that is why the battle is won in the spirit. Amen. Amen. And then he gazed heaven. He lift up his eyes and said, God, if you can deliver me, if you can bring me out of this very depth, out of this darkness, I will, I'm going to go and do the will. I will do your will. Did God do that? Yes. Amen. God did that. So that's why I say to you, even if you've made mistakes, even if you've sinned, even if you do something wrong, call on to God. He will hear your prayer. Amen. He will deliver you. Do not let the devil tell you, discourage you, and remind you of the bad you've done, of the evil you've done. Do not let the devil go that way to discourage you. But stand firm. Stand firm and believe God and know that God is able to bring you out even though it is your fault, even though it is your mistake, even though you've done something wrong. God is able, abundantly able to deliver you, to set you free, to bring you out to the dry ground, amen. to freedom. Can somebody shout a big amen? Amen. Can somebody shout a big amen? Amen. Can somebody shout a big amen? Amen. Our God is good. So today, I want us to believe God right. I want us to know that God is there for us. In every situation, in every circumstances, I want us to know that we should obey, we should believe God. Remember, what happened? When Saul, between Samuel and Saul, in offering sacrifice, he was afraid. He was afraid because the enemy is approaching. And then he go astray and offer sacrifice which is not meant for him to offer. And Samuel come to him and say to him, Saul, you know what? It is very, very important that you obey. Amen? Amen. He said to obey is better than sacrifice. When you obey God, no matter the problem, no matter the situation that is coming, that is even overwhelm you, just stand on your ground. Obey God. Stand there. And then you will see the salvation of God. Amen. Amen. To obey, better than sacrifice. To believe, better than give up. Don't give up. Don't give in. Stand firm. Stand strong. God will come through for us. He has not disappointed his people. He never forsake anyone. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we stand up? You've been watching Rock Intercessors Ministries. We believe you and your family have received God's mercy, love, healing, and miracles. Our senior pastor, Apostle Peter Anuba, would love to stay in touch with you. Please contact us for one-to-one -one prophetic, deliverance, and healing sessions. Please support us in prayers and finance to reach billions of souls whom Jesus died for. Visit our website to see how you can help. Rockintercessors.com You can also subscribe to our mailing list to be notified of upcoming events. See our details below and on screen. Visit our website, rockintercessors.com Email us at info at rockintercessors.com Call us on 07944 204 895 Are you outside of the UK? Text or call us for free using WhatsApp. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now remain in God's goodness and mercy and may God favor you and your family in Jesus' name. Amen.